Here, I'm gonna show you how to create a dynamic invoice for Excel. And that means that every time you add an item down here, a new line will be added for the next item so that you don't have a bunch of these empty rows like this. Instead, it will look like this. And every time we go to add another item, let's say for Nexus 7, it will automatically add another row. And when we're done over here, hit enter, and we can go to add another item. So it makes adding items to the invoice much, much easier. And when we go to print it, it's going to look much better without having all of these extra rows. And down here, if you want to add a new row, you have to right click and add the row. If you want to remove it, you have to do the same thing. But over here, all that we have to do, delete it and it's gone, delete it and it's gone. And I'm gonna show you how to do it using a table like we have right here, and we can change the formatting, don't worry. And where we have no table, like this example right here, it's gonna work the same as the table example, just slightly different formatting. And the best part about all of this is that it requires only a single, very simple line of VBA. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to add that. And this video is made possible by my full Excel courses that I have on teachexcel.com. There, I've got a very good VBA and macro course that is going to show you how to automate your workbook in so many different ways to make your life so much easier. Check the link below this video and you can get a preview of that course as well as check out all of the tutorials that are in it, which is well over 200. But now let's get back to this tutorial and let's go over here with our working invoice. So the original invoice is exactly the same as the invoice working, we just have grid lines that are visible. So if I go to view and remove, it's the same thing. But we are going to start here. So what I want you to do is to get your invoice template. Whatever you use, there are only about a million different variations. So get yours, then all that we have to do, add a bunch of rows, the maximum amount that we are ever going to use. And I am in fact going to add a few here. So right click, insert, and control Y to add one more to repeat that action. Then let's go over here, we have a very simple formula. And I want to copy that down, make sure everything looks good. And make sure that all of your formulas down here have updated. So we want this to work for every single possible row, but we want these values to simply be empty. And before we move on, make sure that everything is working correctly. So input some values, make sure it updates, everything looks good. Then we can go ahead and clear it out. And the magic, the magic is going to be a helper column. Helper columns are life. And all that we want to do here, let's make it a little bit bigger, is a very simple formula. And what I wanna do is to input a one or a zero over here. We want to output a one if the line above it has values in it. There are many ways to check that. I like a very simple len. So let's go equals if open parentheses len to check the length of the cell. And I'm going to use the description column. Close that up, check if the length is greater than zero. That means there's something in it. We output a one. If there's nothing, output a zero. Close it up, enter. And we shall copy it down. So we have a one if there's a value in the row and a one if we are the next empty row. And notice this is a zero right now, but if I input the next is seven, it becomes one. And that's how we're going to show the next row. When I remove it, goes back to zero. So the very next thing is to select everything, go to a data and filter. Uh, then we wanna go over to the helper column, click the drop down arrow, and uncheck zero. Hit OK, and there we go. Notice we have 14, 15, 16, and then 25. But the problem is that when I go and input a value here, it is not automatically going to show the next row. I need to have the filter update. We could do that by hand. One simple way is to go over here, hit OK, and it'll update and show the next row because there's a one here in the helper column for that row but we want it to happen automatically. So let's go here, delete that. And now we need one simple line of code. 
And what we can do is right click this tab, Invoice Working, go to View Code, and up here in General, click a Worksheet. And for Selection Change, just select Change. Then we can delete this. And we input one simple line of code. Me, period, auto filter, period, apply filter. Then we can hit Alt F11 to go back to the worksheet. And a Nexus 7 tab. There we go. That's it. One simple line of code. Uh, this guy right here combined with a filter and a helper column. But now let's make it look a little bit nicer. Go back to the worksheet, Alt F11, and right click the helper column, and click Hide. And of course you want to make sure that you don't have anything above or below that helper column or it will also be hidden. And one more thing I'm going to do, so it will look a little bit nicer, is remove the grid lines. And now let's delete that. <laughs> That's so cool. And let's go. Nexus 7, tab 5, each one is 10,000, enter. Now I'm ready to input Nexus 8, and continue on and on. So it's easy, it's fast, and it looks much, much better, especially when you go to print it. And you don't have to worry about right-clicking and inserting or right-clicking and deleting rows for your invoice. Now, that's all there is to do if you just want to have a simple filter like this. But if you do have a table, so like this, I'm going to show you how to add that right now. And it's almost exactly the same. We just have to do a little tiny bit more for the code. What I'm going to do first is let's bring the grid lines back and unhide this column and remove the filter. All right, and let us take the filter out. Okay, so you have it like this. You want to make it into a table, a very simple. Select everything that you want to be a table, and go to Insert Table or Control T. Make sure my table has headers has been checked. Hit OK. And now we have a table. And the next thing to do is to apply the filter. Of course, you can double check all the formulas to make sure they are OK. So we will click the arrow, and the zero is off the screen. I'm just going to deselect the rows with a zero. Hit OK. There we go. And let's go to Table Design. You can play around with the table styles over here or completely remove them. Of course, it's off the screen right now, but you have many, 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 many options. We'll stick with the blue, but what I do like to do is to remove the filter button. Makes it look a little bit nicer, I think. And then we can right-click the helper column, hide that guy. Now we only need to update the VBA code, and then we are done. But to do that, let's figure out the name of this table. So we can go back to Table Design, and under Table Name, it is Table 2. Let's rename that to TBL Invoice 2, because we already have a TBL Invoice. So you want to give it a descriptive name, start it with TBL, good idea, not required though. Just make sure that you get the name, enter, and now when we click away, we can verify that it has changed, table invoice 2, perfect. Now right click the tab, view code, and we are going to comment this guy out with a single quotation mark, and make another one, me.listobjects, that's what a table technically is, tbl invoice 2, the name we just gave it, dot auto filter dot apply filter. So a slight change to the code, but not too difficult. Then Alt F11 to go back here, and uh, let us try it out. Remove Nexus 8, perfect. Add Nexus 8, perfect. And make sure it works, perfect. And of course, don't forget to remove the grid lines and change any other formatting that you want. And now you have a nice, neat, dynamic invoice with very little VBA code required. But remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg for what you can do with VBA and macros. Automating your workbooks will make your life so much easier, and it's going to save you hours of time every week. I highly recommend that you check out my full VBA course and see if it's something you'd be interested in. I've got a preview video for it at the link below this video, and you can give it a look and see if you'd like to take the course, or if you have any questions about it, you can always message me from teachexcel.com.
for this tutorial, and that's all there is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials in the future.